Hello everybody, this is Crafting Redstone and welcome back to another video. Now, this is a video from our Compacting Redstone series and as you've probably seen from the title of this video, today we are looking at this Redstone RAM. Now, I'm pretty pleased with Redstone RAM. I just thought the other day, you know what, I've not made a RAM in any one of my Redstone videos. So it's about time I tried to make one. So I sat down yesterday, spent about two or three hours and created this. Now, it's not the most space efficient design. I'm not very pleased at how compact it is. It could be cut much more compact. So I'm sure you guys will be able to do that if you did use this, um, just by rewiring some of the things. But it just took that much time anyway. I thought, you know what, it's not too bad. I'm just going to leave it as is. But despite the quite large size, it's got a very, very high clock speed at 5 hertz. And I'll explain a bit more in detail about these later on and a latency overall of 6 ticks. So what I'm going to be doing in this video is doing a bit of a description of what RAM is uh, for those of you who don't know and then going through some of the facts and figures on this actual RAM in front of you here and then kind of just going through how it works such as the hot, um, such as the repeaters which are locked to store the signal and giving a bit of a demonstration as well probably a bit in between one of those sections. So without further ado let's have a bit of a talk about what RAM actually is. So, for those of you who don't know, RAM stands for Random Access Memory. Now, from this word, you can probably guess a few things. This memory is accessed randomly, and what it's accessed by is a CPU. Now, a CPU will output processes and the information, and it will need to save that for later use. So, what it'll do, it'll send the signal and information to RAM, and say, can you set, store this information to a certain area, a certain address, basically. And um, later on, the... CPU can say then actually I want to load that information now so it'll send that address back off to the RAM and it'll load that information to go back into the CPU for usage. So that's where the random access comes into. The CPU accesses it randomly to store data um, and it stores that data as the memory part so that's random access memory, RAM. So in normal computers you may have heard of a term called volatile and non-volatile. Volatile means that as soon as you turn off the computer everything inside the RAM is lost or anything inside that memory component is lost. non volatile means it's kept even when the power's off. However, in Minecraft, gen well, let's go back to real life actually, generally RAM basically is volatile. As soon as you turn off the computer, all that information, gone. You cannot get it back. It's just gone. But in Minecraft, because we're using Redstone, it works a little bit differently. Now, Redstone, there's no need to make it volatile. I'm sure you can do, but what's the point? It's kind of a downside to it it's not a like a good thing so we've just left it as non-volatile memory that means that even when you turn off the power except from the lines above here actually um basically all the signal will be kept um so as i mentioned if you did turn off these lines the signal would be destroyed but in minecraft generally if you use this as it's meant to be intended to it is non-volatile so after that, let's go into some of these facts and figures. Now you know a little bit about the RAM for those of you who didn't know before. That is what RAM is. So now we're going to go into facts and figures on this specific RAM in front of you here. So, to go through a few basic points about this RAM right in front of you here, I've got this bit of a book. So if we have a look inside, this is the Redstone RAM book and it gives you a bit of information on all the things to do with this RAM. So the write speed of this RAM has a latency of 4 ticks, but it can be run, of, run at a frequency of 5 hertz. although I probably wouldn't suggest that as you might get some errors. You shouldn't do, but you never know, you probably could do. Um, especially if they're in different chunks and things, you just don't want to risk out whack up to 2 hertz up here. But going back to that, so that's the write speed, how long it'll take you to write a signal to the RAM and store it. However, the read speed is a little bit different because it works slightly differently. Now the read speed, just like in normal RAMs, is generally a bit faster. So the latency is 2 ticks, so a little bit less, um, just because it's got a few less repeaters and things to go through on torches and all stuff like that. And it can also run at a frequency of 5 hertz. Now, as I mentioned before, this is not the suggested frequency I would run it at. I'd run it at 2 hertz. Now, if you don't know what I mean by 2 hertz and 5 hertz, so 2 hertz, you can send 2 signals to it a second and it'll save those. 5 hertz, you can send 5 signals to it a second and it'll save those too. Now, I mean, like, this this was what I'd call the stock frequency, what I'd probably leave it is. However, if you did want to overclock this for one of your designs, if, like, your computer did need to run at a higher frequency, you could overclock it to 5 hertz and be fairly confident that it should not create an error. So, the overall latency is 6 ticks, and that's because to write it and then read it, you're going to need to go through 4 ticks and 2 ticks, and that's just because of all repeaters and torches I mentioned before. Now, if we move on to the next page, down in front of you, in this video, we probably should say, is four rows of one byte of RAM. So that's eight bits. So each, basically each input is a bit and there's eight bits per row. Um, 
and there is four rows which equals a total of four bytes so that's quite a bit of information what you you can use for minecraft i mean now we're going on to the next bit it is completely expandable so if you wanted maybe it's eight bytes if you wanted to extend the row so it wasn't just one eight bits per row or one byte per row you could make it two bytes three bytes four bytes however the disadvantage from this is whatever you do with that it's going to cause a higher latency now this could create a problem i mean it's going to slow it down the bigger expanded that's why i left it at four by eight bits so yeah you can expand it it's perfectly expandable i'll explain that in a little bit but it is going to incur a bit more latency now each cycle of reading always uh, basically every time you run this it's always going to read but you also have the option of writing it's not a separate read and write and um, when you select an address it's going to read it automatically but in that cycle we can also write to it so basically that is how the ram works and um, i think before moving on we're going to have a bit of a look uh, a bit of a demonstration of how this RAM works, and you'll see that it is a pretty fast one, as you can see. I've always saved some information to it, but we're just going through it and giving it a bit of like practice to show you guys. So, without further ado, let's move on to that. I just thought I'd mention before in my other videos, I haven't really referred to latency and frequency, and I had a bit of a request to do so. So, from now on, I probably will be referring to those in future videos, but some of my other videos probably don't mention it too much, if at all, really. So, from now on, yep, yeah, I'm going to try and include all the uh, facts and figures um, just so you guys can have a bit of clarity on how this works and how fast it works so you can compare it to other RAMs. Now it's not, as I mentioned earlier it's not the best on space efficiency but it's a pretty good one on latency and um, clock speed. But let's have a look at how it works. Now if you know much about binary you know that binary kind of goes 1, 2, 4, 8, 16, 32, 64 etc. So here we've got the address line. The address line is in blue. This tells it what row of the RAM you want to save to. So at the moment it's set to zero. However, if want to, so that's the bottom line here. If you want to set it to one, you'll simply write one in binary. However, I have actually got this wrong way around. So that should be one usually and that should be two. But however, on this design it is one and that is two. Now I've made this using a binary decoder, which I'll sh I've shown in another video. If you want to have a look at that, I'll leave a link now. Um, but it's very easy to fix that problem. You just literally flip these repeats and torches the alternate way around and it will work perfectly fine. So at the moment, I've selected line 1, uh, if I want to select line 2, I'll turn that off and select this line, it'll select that, th well it's actually a third line I guess, let's call it that, um, but 2 in binary, and if I wanted to select the fourth line, which is a 3 in binary, I'd put both down and it'll select this top line up here. So let's give a bit of a demonstration, let's set it back to 0, and now you can spam me, basically, when I said about the hertz and the frequency a minute ago, that means you can put a lot of signals in here automatically, very fast. However, I've got no sort of thing to enter it that fast at the moment, so because I've got another computer, this is just a single RAM module. So I'm using levers here and buttons, but believe me, it should work as intended if you were using it in a big computer. So up there we've got the outputs. These can be wired to move downwards. I just thought I was going to incur a little bit more latency, so I'll leave them up there. And that you can always take, you know, get, you can just as easily take a signal and bring it down here anyway. Um, if you had a computer attached to it, so I've just left it up there for now for this demonstration. So let's save some sort of number. So I want to save the number five, for example. So we want to save a one, and we want to save a four because it goes one, two, four. So it kind of goes one, zero, one. That is a five. So we want to save that to the bottom line. So we're going to click this button, which is the right. And you can see it saved it almost instantly and output it. So that was very, very quick. It was about 0.6 of a second, which is 6 ticks, funnily enough. So that's now saved to line 1. Let's save something to line 2. So we're going to put now 1 in binary. Actually, a 2 in binary because I messed up that a little bit. But if you saw my decode video, you know that will be very easily fixed. So now let's write a 10 to this um, RAM. So we're going to write a 10 to the second row. Um, so you can see, there we go, we'll set that up, we press the button and it should write 10, there we go, very, very, very quickly. So this is a very fast RAM, um, that's why I decided to make a video on it, because I'm very pleased at how it turned out. So now let's write, let's just make an alternating pattern, just so you can see what I'm meaning by this. So we've created an alternating pattern here, um, let's save it to line, are we on line 3, so it'll be a 2 in binary. So now if we click the button, it'll save that, and boom, there you go, you can see it's alternated the pattern. So that's worked very well. So now finally I'm going to write something to line 4. So I'm going to make it to a 3 on binary. And what pattern shall we do? We'll just put them all on for now. So as you can see, oh, we'll just wait till I look. There we go. As you can see, they're all off at the moment. If I click this, within 6 ticks, it should have um, wrote it and then read it from the file. So hopefully, there we go. It's a bit of a lag. Probably because I'm recording. 
But as you can see, it's wrote it very, very quickly and then read it off very quickly. So now I'm going to go into a bit of detail at how this thing is built um, and give a bit of an overview of how you can make it. So without further ado, let's get on with that. So hi guys, I'm going to very quickly demonstrate quite how this locking repeat system works using this mod called the tick rate mod. So I'm going to set the tick rate as 1, which is very, very slow. I'm going to click this button and then hopefully it will click, hopefully, click it. I'm going to work. Come and click it, there we go, clicked it. So now the monostable circuit is going to set off and it's going to flash this redstone here. And you can see the repeat is going to very quickly unlock for a second. Now, as you can see, it's unlocked, it allowed the new signal through and it's going to lock it back down again and then save that signal. So that is basically how the locking repeater works in a bit of slow motion. So hopefully you like this mod, I've found it a bit useful to see how the repeats are quite working. So yeah, that's what's happening. It's unlocking for a second, allowing the new signal through and then locking again. That's how it works. So to begin with, as I mentioned, it has got this decoder line here. Now, the decode line, as I mentioned, is in another video too. Um, basically what it does, it takes the binary signal and converts it into decimal, well, denary we call it. But that basically means our system of counting from um, 0 to 9, so 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 9. It converts into that, but at the moment we've only got four outputs, because we've just got two bits in binary, which converts to four different possible outcomes. So, anyway, at the moment we've selected line... Two, oh sorry, we'll select line, what we're doing, not two, this is zero, so we've selected the first line. So you can see, this redstone torch is off, um, however all the other ones are on. So if we have a look at this over here, um, both sides of the actual locking repeaters, we've got a NOR gate matrix. Now what I mean by this is basically that you can put in an X and a Y coordinate, it'll exactly pinpoint where that is, and then you can save at certain points. So if we have a look at this bottom line here, Basically, both this input here and the other inputs need to be on or off for these torches to change state. So basically, it kind of works like an AND gate, but technically it's a NOR gate. So it's called a NOR gate matrix, and I believe I've done another video on this. So it, it basically uses the solid state driver did, and also the screen I made. Um, so in both those videos, you can find this NOR gate matrix, and I do go in a bit more depth. So I'm going to kind of... I've gone through that before so if you're interested in that please go check out one of the other videos but I'm going to move on for that because a few of you will have already seen how it works. So basically either in between these two NOR gate matrices, um, I'll just try and get on that block there, we've got this yellow line. Now this yellow line is actually the bit what saves the information. This is the RAM itself. It works from locking repeaters basically creating something called a D flip flop which means that it will not let any signal through until you clock the signal through and it will take the current state of this torch. So you can see when it was last clocked, it's showing that this torch here was actually off. If we clocked it again and this torch was on, this repeater here would also turn on. And that's just how the locking repeater works. Um, basically, what happens is we press this button to write, the signal comes up here, um, it turns this torch off, what's basically currently acting like an AND gate, um, or actually it's also a NOR gate I believe. Yeah. Is it an OR gate? Yes, it is. Um, so it's acting as an OR gate, but well, basically an AND gate was a little bit inverted. And um, it turns off, and it means that this clocks for a very brief amount of time because we have actually got a monostable circuit down here, which just clocks it for one tick. Um, so it clocks for one tick, which means a very rapid repeat turn on and off, which just clocks the current state of these torches. So basically, this line here, the redstone dust here, will turn off very briefly. Um, allowing the signal to pass through from the inputs, go through these torches, through the matrix, and get clocked by the D flip flop um, by this repeater here, which locks it. So once it's locked, it's permanently saved out until it's clocked again. Oh, I don't want to fall, I keep falling out of here. Um, so if we go back up here, you can see it currently it's off, but let's have a look at this when it's saved. So the redstone wire is going to be permanently lit up until it's clocked again, it realises the state difference. Um, and then we've got another matrix here. Now this just allows certain signals through from a row. So the decoder tells it which row we want to read and write to. So then it will allow the signals to pass through here. So as you can see, the ones over here have been allowed to pass through. Um, so if we have a look, this repeater is on, so it's turned the torch off. However, this repeater is off, so it's turned the torch on. And actually, because of two NOR gate matrices, it means that the RAM in the middle, the locking repeaters, actually inverts the signal of the inputs. So, bit confusing, that's how it works. As you can see, the current bottom row is being allowed through. 
So these torches have turned on, which allows the signal to transfer up these glowstone towers, up the top where they actually got repeated again because they've just run out of signal, and then they pass over here to the outputs. So we will select a different row, so currently we've got the bottom row selected. Let's say we want to select the first row, sorry, the second row even. Um, so if we come over here, now you can see the redstone there is turned on, which means that the um, torches over there originally, what you saw on a minute ago, have now turned off because the redstone uh, dust on top has turned them off. Um, so we come over here and have a look at row two. Row two is going to output these like repeaters here. So as you can see, um, for some reason, this isn't row two. For, uh, here we go. So this is row two. So as you can see, these repeaters are, are alternating in state. They're either 1 or 0. And actually, no, did I put 10 into this one? Yeah, 10 was the one we put into this one. So you can see, just these two torches are on here, signifying 10, which then outputs, giving an output of 10 in binary over here. So that is how that one is working. If we go to the next row, I believe it's when we turned it all on. Um, so all the inputs are 1 on this one. As, as you can see here, where is it? Is it row above? I'm getting a bit confused here. Bit too much redstone. Get a little bit confused, so I'll find that row very quickly. Indeed, it wasn't actually the third row, it was the top row, which had all the input saved as one. So if we have a look now, um, as you can see, what I meant by inverted is because we've got this torch here, actually in the actual RAM module itself, in the D flip-flops, they all actually invert the input signal. So as you can see, although the outputs are all on, because they're all one, all the D flip-flops are saved as zero. And that is because they just get inverted again by this torch here. So it saves it basically it goes in as one, gets inverted as zero, saved as zero. The zero which is saved then gets loaded as what uh, zero and gets inverted by this, making it a one and then output as a one, which was the correct input to begin with. That's just to lower the latency basically. Um, that's why it inverts. So you can see that's a bit of an overview, we've got all these locking repeaters, the redstone torch passes over and then this redstone torch activates this repeater here which locks it, so you can see it's kind of almost chain design and that is basically how it works. We've got a repeater every so often, so if you wanted to expand it, as soon as the signal runs out you want to kind of do that configuration um, instead of the general configuration to extend the signal. On the Norgate matrices you just want to add a repeater when the signal runs out here as you can see, um, like so and the same on the other side as well. Now, as I mentioned a second ago, the glowstone towers take the outputs from the Norgate matrix and travel them up, up here, where they get repeated again by this little circuit here, which wraps them over, and then you've got the output over here. Um, so that is that, the decoder, I uh, mentioned that to go watch a different video. Um, and then, similar sort of thing with this um, clock here, which actually clocks D flip-flops, it, it goes through a monostable circuit with a piston, sticky piston that is, um, if you've seen one of those before. And it goes through his clock and travels up the glowstone towers and along each one of these and then acts as an AND gate with that torch to allow a signal through. Now the output from the decoder kind of wraps around like this with two repeaters here just to get the latency perfect. Um, and then travels along here and then as you can see this one links to there. And this one is actually on a separate, basically the, the two different ones activate individually. So we've got the actual RAM itself, the default flops, and this Norgate matrix for the inputs, and then the output Norgate matrix is run by a different line of redstone. That's just so you can clock it with an AND gate. So that is basically a bit of an overview of how you build this RAM. If you want to go in a bit more detail, I might do a future video of me actually building this. Recently I installed a very, very useful mod, and I thought I'd just share it. Um, I've seen a few videos on this from time to time, and it's something called the tick rate mod. Now if I turn this on, it basically allows you to mess with the tick rate. Now, redstone works on a tick rate of 10 ticks per second. However, Minecraft works on 20 ticks per second. So we have a look here. Basically, it allows you to adjust the tick rate. So when I'm making computer and they go a bit too slowly because the redstone takes a bit of time passing through all the repeaters, basically I can hire the tick rate. So if I put it at 100, it's going to be, the redstone is going to be working five times as fast as usual. So it's going to be going super speed. I can see my character moves around very, very quickly. And it means that all this redstone is activating very, very quickly. A lot quicker than usual Minecraft. You can see all the little particle effects traveling very, very quick. Now, I'm, very to I'm talking very, very quick and using the word quick a hell of a lot. But... I just thought this would be a bit of a useful mod share. I've been using it recently to test out my build. So, if, for example, I'm not sure what quiet's going on with something. I can set the tick rate lower. I can investigate it and see exactly how the timings are working. I thought it would just be a very useful mod share with you guys. Because I know it certainly helped me with building this. So, yeah, that's a tick rate mod. Um, you can probably find other videos on it and find links to it with that. Um, but, yeah, I thought I'd just share it. Yeah, very useful mod, especially when building redstone. But for now, I think I'm going to leave it at this. If you have enjoyed it, I'll just get rid of that block. 
Um, please don't forget to leave a like. I've put a lot of effort into this one. Um, if you want to ask me any questions, please feel free to do so in the comments. And as, as I mentioned, please don't forget to leave a like because a lot of effort has gone into this. And um, I might make it downloadable at some point so you can use it in your own builds. Um, but for now, that's not currently available. So I'm going to wrap off the episode here. If you have enjoyed it, please don't forget to leave a like and comment any ideas for future videos or anything like that. Um, I'm going to be making more of these compacting redstones and for my previous ones, um, please don't forget to subscribe for more videos because that does really help out the channel. 73 subscribers at the moment, so we're doing fantastically. Really, really pleased. So thank you for watching. I hope you really enjoyed it. Um, goodbye from Crafting Redstone.